Me and you are not the same. Even though we share 99% of our DNA with one another, we eat the same, we sleep the same, we even shit the same, we are not similar at all. Because I'm 6'3 and you're not. No, but seriously, I'm sick and tired of hearing people talk about we should be more accepting of one another because of how similar we are. This couldn't be further from the truth. It is precisely because of how different and unique we are that we should be more curious about wanting to learn about one another. From a physical standpoint, besides identical twins, if you put two people from anywhere in the world, there are so many drastic differences. But more importantly, from a personality standpoint, we couldn't be more different from one another. This is because personality is partially determined by your parents and the traits that you inherit from them. But two, more importantly, personality is largely determined by your upbringing, your environment, and the experiences that you had within that environment. And even though you might share the same parents or the same environment as someone else, you definitely did not experience the exact same experiences. And because of that, all of these experiences are very special and unique to you. I say all this because we have created a society and a system for people who have different skills, abilities, and functions to do the exact same thing. Now, this will in turn create a society that allows some people to do really, really well and some people to do very poorly. Oh, wait, that's exactly how it is. Because of this, since we are so different with different skills and abilities, we need to be taking different steps and actions based off of our skills and abilities or really our personality type and while our personality can be changed and adapted i think most of it is really how it is and all you need to do is determine what your strengths are and play into those so with that in this video i'm going to be going over the steps and actions you should be taking based off of your specific personality type so with that how do we actually determine what our personality type is after watching this video, I strongly recommend looking up the OCEAN or also known as the Big Five Personality Traits Test. It is probably the most commonly used one in psychological research. I very much believe in this one as well. I do not recommend taking the Myers-Briggs test. I think that's all a bunch of baloney. But this one is the one that is most commonly used and the most accurate predictor of who you are as a person. And the reason that this personality test is called OCEAN is that it's an acronym that stands for openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. And now I'm going to break down which each of these means and what this means for you based off of your scores. But as I mentioned, I recommend watching this video first so that you can understand how to interpret your results after you take the test. I recommend watching this entirely before taking this test. But to begin, openness refers to your willingness to try new experiences. If you have a high score in this, this is a great thing because that means you are open and you're willing to try new things. And this is great, but it also has its drawbacks. By being super open and willing to try new things, this can cause a lack of focus and commitment, which can make it very difficult to achieve goals. To achieve anything worthwhile, it takes a very long time and you have to be committed to a certain goal and very focused. If you're all over the place willing to try one thing one day, another thing another day, you can obviously see how detrimental this is. So what I recommend is that if you have a really high score, this is a good thing. But what I recommend is try to stop going out as much, write down a few goals that you really want to achieve and stick with them for a couple of months. Like I mentioned, if you're jumping around, this is going to affect the success you have. And especially if you want to make money, it requires doing the same thing day in and day out. So write down a few goals that mean something to you and stick with them for a couple of months before trying something new. Now, at the same time, if you have a low score with this, this is also a good thing in a way because it means you're more focused and more committed. But you can also find yourself just staying within your house and not doing anything new. You get stuck in a routine of doing the same things every single day. This also has its drawbacks because it can cause a depression, it can cause loneliness, it can cause you just feeling like you lack purpose. By doing new things, by getting new experiences, you grow as a person, you can meet new people along the way. These new things very much help you at the same time. So if you're a person with a low score in this, 
what I recommend is trying to do just at least one new thing every single week. Put it on the weekends or right after work just for a couple of hours, something that breaks your monotonous routine. And it can be something that you look forward to because again, new experiences help you grow as a person and it's super, super critical to your development. Now, the second letter C, conscientiousness. Research has proved that this is the most important one and actually probably the biggest indicator of success. A conscientiousness simply means your ability to complete a task thoroughly, but also done very well. So someone who is very conscientious wants to make sure that their work is not only completed fully, but is also completed to a very high quality. You can probably easily see how this is a very big determinant of success. If you have a low score in this, this will probably explain why you are exactly where you are. You probably don't do your work fully. And even if you do, it's probably of low quality. When you're doing your homework, you probably half ass it and probably don't even complete it. When you sit down to do deep work, you're probably getting distracted all over the place, but then find yourself rushing to complete it. And then the quality ends up being shit. It's probably pretty clear what you should do if you lack in this, put all the distractions away and focus solely on the work in front of you and make sure you're delivering the highest quality of work every single time. You've probably heard the quote, how you do anything is how you do everything. Start small with small tasks, but make sure you do them fully and well, and gradually add bigger and harder tasks on top of that. Now the E, the third trait of the ocean's five big personality traits stands for extroversion. Extroversion, as you might know, determines your willingness and ability to socialize with other people. People who are very extroverted tend to seek social activities and social settings more often. And if you're introverted, you prefer to be more on your own. Now, obviously, people with high scores in this will like to be in more social settings more often. They thrive. They gain energy by socializing with other people. Now, people with low scores tend to be by themselves more often. There's also a huge drawback of being too extroverted as well. It takes time away from personal projects, from personal improvement, from even reflection. People who tend to not reflect end up bottling a lot of their emotions and think that just by distracting themselves with other people, that will go away. Believe me, it does not. That's stays right in the back of your head. People who socialize way too much tend to never do deep work. And it's only through deep work that will get you to the goals that you want to be. Now, I'm not saying to socialize with other people. That is a huge drawback as well. To be completely introverted as well. If you have a low score with extroversion, this is a huge problem as well. I've made a video called The Danger of Being an Introvert. I'll link it somewhere here as well. That also comes with drawbacks. Obviously, if you spend too much time with yourself, as I mentioned in this video, this can cause several issues. You can end up isolating yourself. You can find yourself doing the same things over and over again. It's only through other people that you'll actually not only be able to get to where you want to be faster, but you'll find the work and the purpose that you're on a lot more rewarding. Your life really comes down to your relationships and your network. Not only will you make more money, you've probably heard the quote that network equals net worth, but not only from a monetary perspective, just from a fulfillment perspective, doing things that you care about with people that you enjoy being around will actually make it that much more rewarding. I strongly recommend watching this video. I feel like Social media and the pandemic has just made us more introverted, even though we don't want to be. So I strongly recommend watching this video and improving this score if you lack it. Now, the fourth trait or the A in the big five stands for agreeableness. This basically describes your ability to be pleasant or around other people. In simple terms, it kind of refers to how much of a people pleaser you are. Obviously, there are benefits and drawbacks of being one way or the other. If you're way too of an agreeable person, you can end up being a doormat for people. People will step all over you, take advantage of you, use you only when they need to. You need to cut out those toxic relationships in your life because that is a very huge detriment that will bring you down. Now, on the other end, if you're not agreeable at all, this is also a huge problem. You'll end up not having any friends. You'll end up isolating yourself. You'll end up being lonely and depressed. And when it comes to doing any collaborative work, you're never going to be able to get anything done because you're going to just be butting heads with one another. So you need to learn how to be a little bit more empathetic, be more of a listener, hear other people's perspectives before offering your own and try to come to a common conclusion that integrates not only your perspective, but theirs as well. And now last but not least, the letter N in the big five or ocean 
stands for neuroticism. And now neuroticism refers to your likelihood to experience negative emotions as well as how poorly you respond to stress. So if you score really high in this, that means you do not respond well to negative situations or stress well at all. And I think it's pretty clear that if you have a low score in this, this is a huge, huge drawback. Life is difficult. Life is stressful. You are going to constantly be in stressful situations. If you do not respond to stress, you will never have any success in any domain in your life. And even if you are able to push through, it's going to feel miserable. You're going to be like, is this even worth it? You're going to have a very just difficult life. And a great way to help work on this, as I've described in many videos in the past, is that you need to learn how to reflect and be more mindful. Techniques like meditation, as I've described in pretty much every video I've made in my channel. So I strongly recommend watching those as well as journaling. Actually spilling out your thoughts can actually make them seem so much less big. When, if you see them on paper or you're talking with someone out loud, you're having a difficult conversation as I made in this video here, you will see how small these issues really are. By practicing this, by doing this more often, you'll realize, oh, these difficult situations that I thought were so bad really aren't. And I think by just putting yourself in situations that you're more uncomfortable in more often, the easier all of this will become. And now on the other end, if you score very low on this, I actually think this is just an overall good thing. But like any situation, there's pros and cons for everything. I think if you score very low in this, you can sometimes bottle up your own emotions, not realize your own needs, and you might lack empathy with other people. So I strongly urge you to, again, even with this one, is to still give yourself check-ins, check up. And now with this one, I still recommend giving yourself check-ins and check-ups. Talk to people if you need to self-reflect when need be. But honestly, overall, I think this is just a good trait to score low in. But anyways, that's all I had for this video. I know there's a shit ton of information as to what should I do? What should I not do? There's so much conflicting advice and it really doesn't make sense if no one's giving you specific information for you. Again, we're all so different. Hopefully by this video and by taking that test, you can see where you rank high and where you rank low. So now you know exactly the work that you need to be doing specifically for you. As always, I hope you got a ton of value. And if you did, I wish you all the utmost success because there's plenty for all of us. Mwah.